Hey everyone, I'm Greg and we're back at the Rockford Fosgate R&D Lab. So today we're going to show you how we install the all-new Stage 6 kit on this 2021 Can-Am X3. On our X3, we went ahead and removed the roof and strapped the doors open so we can move our cameras easily in and out of the vehicle. These steps are not necessary for your installation. But before you get started, it's always a good idea to disconnect the power when working on any electronics. The battery compartment is located on the back firewall behind the seat on the passenger side. For stages one, this is the only seat that will need to be removed. However, for stages two through six, you want to remove all the seats and for video clarity, that's just what we did. All the seats are mounted the same, so to get started you need an 18 millimeter socket and extension to remove the two nuts from the rear of each seat. You may have to adjust the seat until you can see the nuts through the access holes. Now using the same 18 millimeter socket and extension to remove the top of the seat belts. You'll use a 13 millimeter socket and wrench to remove the two front mounting bolts. Now if you're removing the driver's seat, there's also a seat belt safety lanyard that needs to be disconnected. And once you have access, you can disconnect the negative terminal from the battery. To prep the dash for the source unit mount, start by removing the upper dash fuse panel. Then use an eighth inch drill bit and pre-drill the two holes using the dimples in the dash as markers. All right, let's get these stock dash panels out. You use a T27 Torx to remove the 12 screws around the outer edge of the upper panels and four from the center. Now on the passenger side, there's a hidden 10 millimeter nut located inside the fuel access door. You'll then use a plastic pry tool to remove the four plastic push pins on the top center area. And there's a fifth pin located behind the ignition hidden under the panel. Then remove the passenger side panel. To remove your driver side panel, lift up and disconnect the headlight switch along with any other accessories and detach the cable sticks. You'll disconnect the harness to the smart lock module by pulling the red pin out and pressing the black catch prong. This can be very tight, so listen for a click. Then carefully remove the plug along with the two additional Christmas tree stakes. Use a plastic pry tool to pop out the panels on both sides of the center console. This bezel and dash mount are designed to give you that clean OEM finish. Secure the bezel to the PMX source unit using the small screws provided with a 3mm Allen wrench and then attach the assembly to the dash mount using the same size screws. Now we'll transfer our smart lock module from the factory panel to the new speaker panel. Orient both panels on the same direction on the table. Using an 8mm socket with extension, remove the four screws from the smart lock bracket. Transfer the assembly to the new panel and secure it using two of the existing screws. Now our kit provides you with new hardware for the third landing, so feed the Phillips head screw through the top side of the panel and secure it with that 8mm locking nut. Your next step would be to transfer any electrical switches to the new panel. Now that you have the smart lock module and switches installed, transfer the four push pin grommets to the new speaker panel so they're ready for installation. Finally, we've included a replacement warning sticker. Now let's install your rear moto cans. The rear cables are designated for the right and left. The red dot is the right or passenger side. So we're gonna route the harness from behind the steering column into the center console and feed the cables along the passenger side and access port through the rear firewall. When you exit the rear, make sure we stay away from any hot engine components and suspension. Now for the passenger side, take that harness with the red dot and follow the vacuum line to the fender. Now continue along the taillight harness and exit through the roll bar area. 
So please keep in mind, you may have to remove the five T27 torque screws to fit your wiring through the rear quarter panels. Now on the driver's side, route the harness inside the channel that's specifically designed to keep wiring away from the engine. Continue along that tail light harness and exit through the roll bar area. Measure and mount your clamps at the desired height using the provided hardware. You may need to modify your shock placement to fit the speaker assembly. It's time to attach your moto cans. First, for these new M2 8 inch cans, you'll need to remove the rubber gasket on your wiring plug. Now slide the can enclosure onto the bracket and tighten the bolt down using the security torques provided and attach your safety retaining door. Now you can plug the wiring harness in. All right, now that we're done with that, we're gonna route our front speaker wires. Use the front left for the driver's side and the front right for the passenger side, making sure your waterproof connectors reside in the center dash. Now route your power harness from behind the steering column into the center console. Feed the cables along the passenger side to the battery compartment. Run your subwoofer harness along with the power harness going from behind the steering column into the center console and feed the cables to their designated area. All right, now you'll notice the subwoofer enclosure comes preloaded. So all you need to do is mount the brackets to the enclosure and simply place the subwoofer in the down firing position, resting the brackets over the rear seat studs. Then using a T30 torque, secure the provided bolts through the front seat brackets into the threaded inserts on the enclosure. Finally, remove the rubber insert and plug in the subwoofer harness until it clicks into place. You'll follow the same steps for the second subwoofer assembly. Now you're ready to mount the amplifier bracket. We're gonna make your life a little easier by recommending that you remove the outer and inner driver side panels. You'll need a T30 Torx and a 10 millimeter wrench for the nine screws and two nuts holding these panels in place. Position the two C-clamps toward the outside of the driver's cage and then secure the bracket over the top of the roll bar using the eight millimeter socket. Let's keep these loose for now because you need to install the nut over the existing screw that holds the outer panel during the reassembly process. Slide your amplifier into place. Start with the screws closest to the steering wheel. This will help you line up the other two that are harder to reach. Okay, now you're ready to wire the amplifier. These new M5 series amplifiers are equipped with our new preset technology and also has new pigtails for your connections. So let's start with your output cables. Your front output is for the dash panels. Your rear output is for the moto cans. Now connect your power plug as well. And the sub output is for the subwoofers. Once that's done, we'll move to the input. Plug in the harness label for the front to the pigtail labeled front, and the harness labeled rear slash subwoofer into the pigtail labeled subwoofer. Now that you have your amplifier mounted and wired, you can reassemble your side panels. Be certain the lower tab on the bracket is seated over the panel screw on the front firewall and secure the provided 10 millimeter nut. Then go ahead and tighten down the seat clamps. Okay, now you can install your PMX harness. Feed the 12 pin Molex into the center dash area from the driver's side and connect the power wire to the plug located under the center dash. Once that's done, we'll run our RCA cables to the center dash for connection to the source unit. Now you connect the blue remote turn-on wire. Now, match your speaker locations to the proper cables and attach.
All right, you're ready to install the new Rockford Fosgate Color Optics Controller. This is a Bluetooth device that will allow you to remotely access the lighting features through the RF Connect app. We'll start by connecting the power cable to the PMX harness, and then attach the waterproof connections to your speaker cables. You can utilize any of the eight Color Optics plugs provided. That was a great time to go through and secure your wiring runs. Be sure you have proper clearances where needed and any loose slack is tied off. Okay, you're ready to install your new front speaker panels. Start with the driver's side and reattach the smart lock harness being sure to push in the red locking pin. Now reattach the headlight and any other accessory switches that you have. Now move over to the passenger side and seat the panel back into its original location. Now you're ready to install your speakers. Plug in the four pin Deutsch connectors for the color optics feature. Connect the speaker wire by attaching the red wire to the positive spade lug and the black wire to the negative spade lug. Position the speakers to the number three hole on the panels and secure it using the included three millimeter bit and supplied hardware. Now let's install your new dash assembly. Attach the included antenna, the white 12 pin connector, and the RCA cables from your amplifier arm. You can also make any additional connections with Rockford Fosgate accessories like the USB port, your aux in, or additional remotes. Now using a T25 Torx driver, you'll secure the dash assembly to the Can-Am using the larger provided screws. Okay, now that we have that done, we're ready to make our battery connection test our system, and reassemble everything to get this Can-Am back out to the trails. All right, as you can see, that installation came together pretty easy. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact our technical support. They can be reached Monday through Friday at 1-800-669-9899. Until next time, I'm Greg, and we'll see you again soon.